autism and cancer. I don't really want to talk about the causes. I don't really want to talk, well, a little bit about the causes, but I want to talk about autism and cancer, mostly autism. Uh, my name is Ryan. This is High Carb Regenerator. Welcome to my channel. So I was out driving today. I do a lot of DoorDash. And one thing that I see a lot of is bumper stickers or like lice plane uh, holders. They'd say like autism awareness and uh, cancer awareness and, and, you know, name a charity that you got to donate to. But where, why, you know, like what, what's going on with all this? Another thing that I wanted to talk about is I live near an Amish community. It's like the largest Amish, Amish community in, on the planet, I do believe. And, um, uh, you never see any of this stuff with them. So I wanted to get into that. All right, this isn't going to be a long video, but I just wanted to talk about the science behind the uh, autism in the Amish community, energetic community, I guess they're calling it. So as one MIT uh, researcher, Daphne or Stephanie <laughs> Senna, uh, has already predicted, if the current uh, tr trend continues unabated and if nothing is done to shift this mo uh, mon monument or momentum, sorry, in a positive direction today, the incidence of autism will be one in two children by 2025. So what is that, two years from now? It's it's not like that in the Amish community what's, whatsoever, like whatsoever. Making a choice not to uh, V their children is well known, albeit a uh, controversial practice in Amish population by and large. What has been largely overlooked and misunderstood as to how their immunity is robust without following the V uh, schedule as advised by conventional medicine is the whatever that word is basis that underlies their choice choices and hence the positive results they're experiencing as a result of those choices in form of almost all their children being free of the symptoms of autism if the v is probably causing it you know what do we do there Background. Uh, so here's another article talking about the prevalence of rate of autism spectrum disorders appears to be suddenly increasing. The latest report from the Center of Disease Control estimates the a rate of ASD is one in the 91 children, up from one in 150 just two years prior. Um, <clears throat> one population isolate that has been studied extensively is Amish with well over 250 gen genetic text studies. Expanding studies of autism to the Amish may provide important information about et etiology and crucial first step in this process is a uh, feasibility study to determine ASD prevalent rate in this population. Now, I know the government already does this. The government already does this pretty heavily and they don't ever publish the results. Why don't they publish the results? And it's crazy because I'm sure these uh, charities have the results to this. <clears throat> um, so it goes on to to talk about, Karina goes back to uh, 18, uh, 1,899 Amish children were screened in the two Amish co uh, uh, communities. The two biggest, it looks like, I know Ohio's massive. So it's Holmes County, Ohio. I've actually ridden there. It's like the most amazing riding in your life because there's no cars whatsoever. But you can't do it at night because there's no street lights either because there's no electricity. And Elkert, uh, LaGrange County in Indiana, two of the largest Amish, Amish communities, trains clinicians as, as such saying door to door using a published Amish directory as guide. Families were approached and asked to participate in a brief interview regarding their children. Two primary screening instruments were used, a social communication questionnaire and a DSM a checklist a tool created by authors, a V history, and brief family history, including uh, questions specific to ASD phenotype were taken. Children screening positive on, on either the uh, S, uh, SCQ or DSM checklist were seen for more comprehensive uh, uh, clinical evaluations. This evaluation included autism diagnostic observational schedule and autism uh, diagnostic interview. Blah, blah, blah. So a total of 14 screen positive for ASD on uh, both screeners. Of the 25 children, 14 were evaluated and seven children were confirmed as a diagnosis of ASD. Amish communities at a rate of approximately 1 in 271 children using, so basically it broke down to 1 in 271 children. Now, the fact checkers got involved with this. And uh, before we go into this too much farther, the fact checkers were sued in 2021 and lost, and Facebook finally had to admit the fact checkers were just 
opinion. And what was the opinion on the side of fill in the blank yourself? It goes on basically to say that they are now breaking down a little bit. Now, if that's true, that might be why their rates are increasing. Uh, 60, 68% stated that all of their children had received at least one uh, V and 17 reported that some of their children had uh, at least one uh, one V. So there is that. But I mean, why, why, why did no, no, does nobody know this? And of course, when you see the fact checkers in there, you know, it's a lie, right? They've already been taken to court. Everybody knows it's just opinion piece and it's trying to sway you in a certain way. And, uh, even Mark Zuckerberg got sued. I don't know if he got sued, but he was talking about this the other day. I saw a video of him admitting that all the stuff they were blocking on Facebook back in the day was all actually the truth. Let's watch. You just take some of the stuff around COVID earlier on in the pandemic where um, there were you know, real health implications, but there hadn't been time to fully vet a bunch of the scientific assumptions. And, you know, unfortunately, I think a lot of the kind of establishment on that um you know, kind of waffled on a bunch of facts and, you know, asked for a bunch of things to be censored that in retrospect ended up being, you know, more debatable or, or true. And they were blocking the truth, you know, and, he, you know, he's like, oh, I, I can't believe, you know, you know, I can't believe we were doing that. So we know that this is all just a lie, but why is this happening? So I wanted to talk about this as well. So the, the UNV Amish rarely get cancer, autism, or heart disease. Coincidence? I don't think so. I will probably link these uh, down below. But I did want to talk about this. So here are a few red flags for me when it comes to V. Blue V contain multiple neurotoxins at very high concentrations. Influenza uh, virus V contains two or twenty five thousand uh, twenty five thousand times higher levels of mercury than what the EPA says is safe in drinking water. V are not backed by safety trials or efficacy data. Efficacy data. Patients are not given the potential risk associated with the V. Pharmaceutical companies pushing V have absolute legal immunity against anybody claiming their product can cause damage all right so the rising epidemic of autism sharp, sharp increase in the number and then we come into glyphosate so another thing to be aware of is the synergistic negative effects these chemicals have when combined with uh, genetic genetically modified foods containing the active ingredient roundup studies have uh, shown that glyphosate inhibit every single one of the 50 Cytochrome P450 enzymes responsible for detoxification in the human body. So, on a side note, that could largely be the reason that I had such an issue with the pound a day sugar, because I can almost guarantee that glyphosates were in that sugar because it was conventional. All right, the Amish opt out of V and rarely develop autism. So, autism affects over 20 million people worldwide. Autism occurs in boys. Uh, four to five times more than uh, than in girls. One of every 68 children has some form of ASD. Uh, U.S. autism rates have increased 38% since 2012. And here's, again, possibly one in two by 2025. Uh, and then I really wanted to look at this. So Autism Society of America, uh, 1% of what they collect goes towards actual charitable activities and one, 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 one percent actually goes. So uh, where's the money going? Where's the money, Lebowski? Uh, so in 1980, autism diagnosis rates were approximately four in 10,000. In the 90s, the number jumped to one in 2,500. Uh, a while later in decades, uh, one in a thousand. And now we're supposed to be one in two in 2025. And we've uh, $47.6 million a year is going to research for this. And what is it doing? Where's it going? Where's this money go? Where's the money, Lebowski? So I wanted to talk about cancer for a second. Just for a second. I didn't want to talk about it too much. How much money is raised for cancer? $145 million a year. Does it go? So, and I just want to look, just wanted to look, maybe, maybe, maybe it's done some good. Maybe it has, maybe it has helped some people. So since 1980, melanoma is up 375% and cancer is up 150%. So there are $5 billion, billion dollars. There you go. You want that money, Lebowski? Bunny says you're good for it. What are they doing with it? Because they clearly know that it's this sort of thing causing what's going on. 
So what do they research? So as you see, autism, barely any of the money that they collect goes to actually autism uh, study or whatever the hell they think they're doing. And apparently, according to the thing, 80 to 90% of the money collected in the cancer charities actually goes to where it's supposed to go. So what are they doing with the money? Uh, what is it, 1946 or 64, one of the two, and they've been collecting money uh, for the research and nothing has happened. Where's the money, Lebowski? Matter of fact, cancer and autism have both increased quite a bit since 1980, when a lot of the stuff seems to have happened. And uh, where's the money going? Where's the money, Lebowski? Where's the fucking money, shithead? You know, like, where does the money go? Who's taking this money? $5 billion for uh, cancer? I didn't see how much uh, total for autism. But where's the money going? Because we know that the cause is our environment and the food that we're eating. We already know that. Like, if you're smart enough to actually research, if you're watching this video, maybe you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. But if you're, if you, where's the money going? Like, whose pockets are we lining with this stuff? This is why I don't give it to charities, because most of these charities are usually just funneling right into somebody's pocket just like uh that gregor guy right all the money he makes just right into his pocket you know like what does he do with it i don't know but uh he claims he's a charity or donations or whatever but what are we donating to uh you know it's just the question is where is the money going anyway comments questions down below like subscribe and i'll talk to you in the next video